What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's Bars and Barbells. I'm Phil with my lovely co-host, Samantha. Hey, guys. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we're matching today. We got blue shirts. Got gold chains. Gold chains, black headphones. So He wanted to be just like me. You know, that's why we're Bars and Barbells. Great team here. <laughs> uh, it's your first time on the channel. Welcome. If not, glad to have you back with us for a, another one. We're doing Larry Bird Ultimate Mixtape. This is a recommendation in those comments from you guys, which we always appreciate. Had to get to some Larry Bird. We've done some MJ. We've done a few other athletes as well, but we had never done Larry Bird. So I'm excited to check out some of his moves. Are you ready to get it going? I am. Let's do it. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bird. He was the most motivated player I ever saw. Larry Bird is one of the biggest trash talkers <laughs> ever. Larry was a basketball genius. Of a hick from Finch Lick <laughs> out as his calling card. And if you believe that for one second, uh, you were going to get beaten. Oh, that was sweet. That was smooth. Oh my goodness. How do you do that? <laughs> Left him for dead. What's on the 10 seconds? We'll walk out and Larry say, I'm going to get it right here, Ed. And I'm going to shoot it in your face. <laughs> <laughs> he hit it and looked at me and he was like, damn. I didn't mean to leave nothing on the clock. <laughs> That's the first three-point contest, he says. I'm just, just looking to see who's going to finish second. This is a tie for the money. Yo! Just absolutely unbelievable. Dominique guarded him, Cliff guarded him, Antoine Carr guarded him, my guarded him. Uh, nothing worked. Bird with eight seconds. Bird on the drive. The runner oh, is good yeah. again. Oh. Larry Bird is just unconscious. He it's called like... it. Uh, he said Rainbow uh, trainer's lap. And Bird falls into Joe O'Toole. The guys are into the benches giving <laughs> each other five. I mean, Bird is a bad man. Bird has 60 points. <laughs> He would do a head fake. Oh my goodness, or four? He would do this, and the guy would turn, and he would just fake the crap out of God. Larry told all of us and the media, he said, tomorrow night's the last game of the trip, I'm going to play this one left handed. And at the <laughs> end of three quarters, the next <laughs> night in Portland, he had 27 points left handed. That's wild. body was behind the basket and he released that left hand shot. That was his own shot! Oh, that was pretty. What? Over the head. <laughs> It does not count. And Larry just hit what would have been the game winning shot, but KC called timeout. Larry came back to the bench and you know he was a little upset. He looks at the bench and says, Hey guys, when I come back after timeout, I'm gonna go right to the same spot and I'm gonna kick it in. The ball looks by a one. Aims to bird. He gets a good shot in the zone of Twitter. Boy, this is something else. He would just flick it or tap it or bounce it to a teammate without even catching it. Woo. That's the play of the game. 
my goodness. He's literally Man, wild. Larry was different. Insane. Larry Bird was really different. Like, doo, 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 doo. He just he's got so much rhythm to his game. Yeah. You know, just um I mean I've heard he's great, right? But just seeing these this is the first time I'm really seeing some highlights from him. And, you know, like you said, just his touch on the ball, you know, the obviously the confidence. You know, I heard he was a trash talker, but I didn't know he was like that doing that much, being like, I'm gonna come back to this spot and do the same thing and you're not gonna stop me. And uh, yeah, Larry was he's a bad also man. Like, yeah, he's also so like tall and lanky and like I feel like usually some players like that like don't have the best like coordination with their body. Yeah, yeah, like they're just not as in tune with their body, but he's like killing it. Yeah, no, for sure. It's interesting too because obviously he's he grew up in a different era, right? And was playing in, in a short, different short era. era. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> but I feel like, you know, if he had been playing in this era, like he would have been so dominant, like, it, you know, because as you progress with technology and training yeah. and gear and equipment and yeah. all that stuff, like, you know, the way LeBron's kind of coming up, you know, and having the best of the best to make him the best. Right. You know, I feel like, like you can just see his skill set, man. It's wild. Like yeah. he's just so unique. Um, he can do everything. Basically, I was also right? laughing when they said they played the whole game with his left hand. Yeah, that's wild. Also, Twenty scored twenty seven points with his left hand that's only, wild. and he said he was going to do it. <laughs> that's crazy, <laughs> right? And he he can do everything, right? He passes. He can shoot the mm, three. You know, yeah, he, like he, big team player, you can tell. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Great passer. I didn't know he was that good at passing. Anyways, let's keep it going. Sorry if you guys can hear this this uh, drilling that's going on. You got neighbors sometimes that happens, but yeah. let's keep it going. He's gonna slow it up. At the buzzer. Oh, pump pick. Oh, oh. Steal. that the Celtic fans, I think that most of the arena and the Detroit Pistons forgot that Larry Bird hadn't quit. Now that's a steal by Oh my goodness. of all of these accomplishments and all these things he does, Larry Bird plays hurt. The Indiana Pacers pick up their level of attention. They smell it right now. They know the leader is not on the floor. Someone needs to step up now for Boston. Little did you know, he's coming back. That's crazy because like players nowadays they get a fracture of their orbital bone or whatever they said i can't remember but um they they're done for the year yeah they're like, out the for like six weeks yeah this guy comes back in the same game bro that's wild <laughs> that's toughness i the love mental that. toughness there though to like be like i'm gonna push through for my team because he wants to play the game that's yeah. the difference nowadays the love too, for the game right is everybody's playing for money nowadays yeah. they're not playing for the love of the game right it's like ah oh, you, you know i'm hurt it's really not worth it to me you know i'm gonna jeopardize my next paycheck so <laughs> Yeah, as you guys can see how I feel about the current game. Making me making me sound like an old head here. <laughs> Statistical line when you talk about Larry Bird here in the sand. 
They have different personalities and different backgrounds, but their value system was identical. Magic. Larry. Got him. Please welcome now the Irvin Magic Johnson. To uh, the greatest basketball player ever, but more important, a friend forever. <laughs> I dedicated my life to basketball, and I dedicated my life to the Boston Celtics. My basketball career is officially over, and I had a blast. But tonight I leave you and I say thank you, Boston. Good night. Little Larry. Crazy. So what was your thoughts on Larry? You probably had no idea about him prior to this, right? I know who he is. Like, I've heard the name and, like, I've heard about him. But obviously, this is, like, well before my time of ever watching basketball. So I've never really seen, like, much of what he can do on the court. But it just blew my mind. Yeah, he's wow. pretty wild. Yeah, like he's literally incredible. He's also so tall. Yeah. He's standing beside people on the court who are tall humans, and he's like towering over top of yeah. them. Well, I mean, you know, I, I really liked uh, just the way he approached the game. You, mm -hmm. know? you can uh, tell he loves it. Right? Also, I think it's really cool when a player pretty much dedicates their whole career to one team because they're invested in growing with that team, yeah. and, you know, nurturing the process of building the culture and stuff in one place, opposed to like hopping to as, team to team. As for, they do now. Yeah the paycheck you know who's yeah, gonna give me the biggest well, paycheck not even a paycheck like i mean that's the other side of it right you have the championship chaser as we know like you could classify lebron into that yeah you know um i mean i do give lebron credit because he went back to cleveland and won cleveland the championship so i really you know i do respect him for that but um you know i think that whole aspect with lebron kind of started a trend of moving to other teams creating these teams to chase championships and like you said it doesn't create the you know the same um loyalty the environment of loyalty yeah. to your team and, well, and I mean, yeah, when you look at like two people that were like the arguably in the top greatest players of all time like Larry Bird, who stayed with one team his whole career, and Michael Jordan, who stayed with the Bulls for pretty much his whole career. Yeah, I mean, until like well later on. Yeah, and he was an owner of the Wizards yeah. at the time that he came back to play for them, right? Yeah. And then even Kobe, right? Yes. Same thing. Kobe Lakers, Bryant yeah. always played with the Lakers, Lakers. right? Yeah. And um, you know, you look at their legacies, right? <laughs> you ask any of these players today, would they like to, you know, have their legacy resemble Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, or Larry Bird? <laughs> Guarantee you, they're gonna be like, yeah, that sounds yeah. great to me. Yeah. You know, and and that's because I think you know part of that is you you get to know the organization you get to know coaches you get to know your teammates you get to know the personnel you know in the back back rooms of the medical staff and yeah, you're you know, just creating a full like a family like a culture exactly right, right? when you build yeah. culture that you know in anything that you do not even just sports and business or family or whatever right you know that's going to probably 
really you know create a successful environment so yeah one thing that really stood out to me in this as well that i thought was really cool was the energy in the crowd i feel like that's also very different than the way that it is now i mean not that i've been to a basketball game in a couple years but you know you could just tell that the fans were like diehard fans for their team because the team was like you said they had taken the time to build the team and the culture and like the players were so in love with the game and showing up for the team like look what larry bird did when he had the face fracture the the um, eye fracture, fracture whatever, right? Yeah. Like he literally came back because he was so invested in his team. Yeah. So obviously the fans are going to be more invested when they see that, oh, right? Yeah. So yeah, like, I, how they all came like swarming on the thing. I was like, Jesus. Yeah, I mean, I think you know, like uh, I really respect the players of today, like their athletic ability and their, you know, uh, where they are with their skill levels and everything has mm -hmm. obviously grown. Um, but I think that you know. Like you had mentioned coming back and playing, for example, right? Kobe, even when he tore his Achilles, right? He came back and shot some free throws on a torn Achilles, right? Like, you know, because he had to, because they, the team was going to suffer and, and be penalized yeah. for, for it, right? So um, dedication, you know, right? And I think that that's like you said, you mentioned dedication to the team, to the fans, to, the you know. The sport as a whole. Yeah. yeah. And that it makes us, the fans really, you know, much more engaged. And I think that, you know, one of the things I just, as I've said already, I'm not, you know, totally enthralled with where the game is going at the moment is, you know, like the size of these contracts, you know, you're getting paid 400, 500 million, you know, for a contract now. And, you know, the fans are the ones that are paying for the contracts. Yeah. With right. Their ticket prices. Right. The ticket prices keep going up and up and up and the concessions and everything else. But people's wages aren't going up in line with that. And it's just I just feel like sometimes the players are a little bit disrespectful because they get all this money. And kudos to you. You know, you worked hard. You got your bag. You know, you're making your money with your contract and all that. But, you know, it's it seems like it's kind of gone in reverse. Like you would I would feel like these players kind of de deserved it more because yeah. of how much they were giving. Yeah. Right. Versus now versus now they give less and seemingly care less and they're getting paid more. And people are having to shell out more to go see them and grow the business. And I know it's not just the players, the owners, and everybody else is yeah. making a whole lot of money as well. It's a whole organization. Yeah. But. but I think it's just too, you know, money hungry at this point. Anyways, we've been rambling for a while. Larry Bird did his thing. He, he killed it. He's a, he's a beast. Good job, Larry. He's different. And uh, we're glad to got, we got to check this out. So if you enjoyed it, hit the, hit the thumbs up for us. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Leave us a comment. And then come back and check out our next video. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.